That's it, Mike. Okay. Thank you. So, members, we have a quorum. And on Starleaf, joining us by Starleaf Conference today is myself, Sinead Bradley, Jerry Carroll, Rosemary Barton, and in the room then are Tom Buchanan and Nicola Brogan. So just want to remind members, obviously, at, the, at this stage, that if you want to come in, just you can use the hand raise on your Starleaf or just raise your hand. I can see most of you anyway, so there's no problem with that. And just to ensure that all devices are put on silent um, or switched off. So just to confirm, the clerk is currently isolating and um, will join us by Starleaf also. And... We're joined by Shane McAleer and of the Standards and Privileges Committee who will provide clerk and duties in the room today. So if the clerk can inform us if any notice has been received in relation to delegated authority. Oh, oh sorry. Then you'll uh, need to mute your speakers. That's it. Um, yeah, yeah. Yes. Thanks, Chair. Yes. Um, and hello, everyone. Uh, John O'Dowd has um, allocated his vote to yourself, Chair, and that's the only um, allocated authority. Okay, that's great. Thank you. And just to confirm, then, agenda item one is apologies, and the only apology we have is from John O'Dowd and also now Gary Middleton. And Morris hopefully will be joining us. Um, agenda item two then is the draft minutes of the previous meeting held on the 2nd of December and they're page five. Is everybody content that they reflect, they're an accurate reflection of, accurate reflection of the meeting? Yeah. Agreed? Agreed. Okay. Agenda item three is matters arising. I don't have anything for matters arising. Are people content? Yeah. Okay, so agenda item four then is our temporary provisions on the motion to amend the temporary provisions. Members, you'll recall that at the last meeting, <clears throat> excuse me, the committee agreed to extend temporary provisions in Stanton Orders 110 to 116 to the summer of 2021. The provisions currently cease to have effect on the 31st of January 2021. In addition, the committee also agreed to, to amend Stanton Order 112 Eight, in respect of the temporary provisions and the 9.30 a.m. deadline for nominating a proxy. At page 11 is a covering memo from the clerk. At page 12 of your pack is a draft motion to extend the temporary provisions to the 3rd of July 2021. Are members content that, that we go ahead with that as agreed at the last meeting? Great. Yes, agreed. Sure. And are members content with the draft motion? Yes. Sure. Sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. Sure. Just your your uh, your screen is is quite choppy. I don't know if it's just my connection, but your your screen. Actually, you're uh, it's it's everybody's Jerry because actually I I I I wasn't sure if you were all keeping up with where I where I'm at on the agenda. I was a wee bit worried about it there. The the connection seems to be very bad. Yeah, just your choppy from my end, just to let you know that. Thanks. And look, if if I do go past something and because of the connection, I've missed somebody. Just just shout, bring me back to it. I don't mind going back. You know, I don't I don't want people to miss miss out and getting their point across just because there's a bad connection. But it might be worth maybe shade just checking. That seems to be a wee bit better now. No. Okay. So, members are content then with the draft motion? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, at page 13 of your pack then is a draft letter to the Speaker explaining the committee's deliberations and decision to amend Stanton Order 1128. Are members content to the, that the draft letter and to forward it to the Speaker? Yeah. In relation to the 9.30 deadline, which obviously we had, we had some concerns around, but we wanted to do it in a way that would have 
I suppose be the cleanest and give and give greatest legal cover even in terms of the speaker's office. So the clerk is awaiting legal advice with regards to the wording of the draft motion to amend standing orders in respect of the 9:30 a.m. deadline. We hopefully receive that over the next week or so. And once that that advice has been received, um, if members are content to agree a draft motion by way of correspondence over the re recess period, so the clerk will email us a, a copy of the motion. And if I could just ask that everybody come back and respond, just to say that you're content or not content with that, because obviously if we're all content with it, that can proceed over the recess period. Are members are members okay with us proceeding in that way? Yeah. Great. Okay, that's great. Um, and it's saying hope that a single debate on both motions will be scheduled for the new year and the clerk will inform members once that has been confirmed. Nick, do you need to come in on any of that? Or are you happy that No, that's that's fine, Chair. Thank you. Okay. So the next item then is agenda item five, and that's our proxy voting. And again, members, you recall at the last meeting, the committee agreed to defer its decision um, on which option to proceed with in respect of proxy voting. And that was really just to give members an opportunity to um, to have a think about it and, and you know, decide what they thought was the best option. So the clerk's option paper is at page 16 of your meeting pack. And the responses received from parties and independent members are at pages 23 to 73 for your information. At page 17 of the options paper, and as a reminder of the three options identified were, option A was to simply do nothing and keep Stanton orders and permanent proxy voting as they currently are, Stanton order 2711. Option B, to permanently put in place Stanton order 112, which is the current temporary provision for proxy voting. And option C is a more considered approach containing parental leave and or long-term medical absence outside of COVID-19. So based on the committee's previous discussions and consideration of parties' views, op option C probably seems to be what the majority of members are leaning towards. However, if option C is what the committee agrees to, we have to decide whether just to provide parental leave or to also include long-term illness. I suppose I want to allow members the opportunity to come in in relation to this, just from my own point of view, my own position would be that I do think you need to go outside of um, parental leave and it should include long term illness because, you know, obviously there will come a point when, when an individual in a party will have to decide whether they're able to continue with their role. But I think that they should at least be given the opportunity to. to have a considered approach around that where they shouldn't be forced into a position where because their party will not have votes within the assembly chamber that they're making that decision maybe more quickly and not in a considered manner in which they would like to um, and i think just compassion would say that that's the right approach for me um, and i suppose option c at the moment i know that some members would be more content if we kept it as it is at the moment and i can't say that i'm absolutely opposed to that either i think we do have time to consider if we want to to move further i think that option c is is for me at this point the right option but i don't think that we should say that that's set in stone for never more i think that we do need to look at you know are there more is there more potential? Is there a good way of doing it? It's about ensuring that the democratic process works properly and that people are held accountable, but at the same time, allowing people to make best use of their time, most effective use of their time for their constituents. So I would like to allow members the opportunity because the the screen is so bad, rather than wait for people to put up their hands. If people are okay, I'll just ask you if you have comments to make. And then you can come in as, as, I, as I say your name. Is that okay? Because the, the screen is so bad that I can't even see if people have their hands up. And I don't want anybody to miss on the opportunity. So I'm going to take you as kind of 
as you are in order on the screen for what I can, can see. Is that okay? So, Jerry, you're actually first on my screen there. Yes, thanks, Chair. Um, yeah, I, I think ideally, um, B, B was good. Um, I suppose still is good from our perspective. Uh, but uh, the, the issue with B, I suppose, is it doesn't have the 930 flexibility uh, issue there. So, um, if there's any way of, of merging B and C uh, with that in mind, you know, that would be the perfect scenario, if you will, from our perspective. And, um, because I, th I think it's, and I know some people have kind of alluded to, you know, maybe people not being in the building um, or possibly sort of taking advantage, you know. Um, but I, I think it's it's basically, you know, it's ultimately it's up to the expert if they see uh, MLA, you know, neglecting their duties or, you know, not being instant moment or, or, or whatever. So uh, ideally I would prefer a, an amended B, but I know that's not a front of us, chair, but I just wanted to kind of, and say that would be um the our preference because I think B allows for a more flexible approach to to society and politics and isn't as a bit isn't as rigid as, as elements of CR. So just a few, a few points there, thanks. No, no, and I don't I don't disagree with some of the points you're making. Jerry, it'd be, it'd be fair with to you. Clerk, before we move on, do you want to come in on what Jerry has said? Nick? Yes. Um, well, yeah, and and Jerry's right in that if you did decide to go with option B, um, and basically replicate everything that's in Standing Order One One Two at the minute, that wouldn't then include what we've discussed um, and looked at in terms of the the half nine deadline. But um, I'm hoping that we will have the uh, motion ready for that, certainly for and and almost in place by the time we get to the next meeting. So if option B was what the committee decided that they wanted to go for, then, you know, it would be a very easy thing for us to actually then incorporate the uh, the change to the half nine deadline, certainly. OK, thank you. Thank you, Nick. I appreciate that. Rosemary? Uh, I would be, we would be considered as a party option C. Okay. In relation to prox proxy voting, we're not qu quite quite there to go go permanently on it, and we'd like to continue in the method in which it's used at the moment. Okay. Sinead? Sinead, I don't know if you're on mute or... If... Sorry, can you hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay. Thanks, Chair. Um, yes, to be fair, I'm not fully there yet. I take um, Nick's comment about that half nine being able to, I suppose it could be incorporated to any of the options that we're looking at here. But I suppose, um, I, I, I don't think obviously today or this format's really working well for anybody to be making any decisions on it. And we do have a bit of more, a bit more time to digest. And I think there might be um, parts of I suppose between C and D, there's stuff in D that I see value in. So I think maybe some hybrid between the two, which have not fully arrived at yet. Okay. So you would prefer we didn't take a decision today in relation to this? Sinead, I'm right in saying that. Sorry, Chair. To be fair, I think given that um, the time, because we have got a temporary provision in place, is there any... Could I take some advice? Do we need time on it? Do you know, I'm just thinking I, I am missing out quite a bit on what's being said here. Yeah, um, yeah. So it's maybe not just an ideal format to do it. And also, I don't feel any huge time pressure on this. Maybe, maybe I'm unaware of something. Um, is there anything, Chair, that we should be mindful of in the timing of this? You know, I don't think so. Nick, can you just confirm that, that we could wait to the next meeting to take a, a decision in relation to this? Yes, well, certainly. And, you know, Sinead is right. There is no time pressure at all on this. It, as we've now agreed today that the current temporary provisions, which in other words is option B of 112, are going to be in place until the summer recess. Looking at what is then going to replace those on a permanent basis doesn't have to be agreed until the summer recess. So, you know, there there is no pressure at all on, on having to get something agreed. It was just that it was, it was uh, something that we had said that we'd come back to this meeting, but but certainly there's plenty of time. So 
Yeah, sorry, I heard. Sorry, Chair, I heard some of that. So yeah, I just um, you know, I I would be happy to go ahead if we want to tease this out and take a vote on it today. But I'm just mindful that I'm not fully hearing all members' views on it, which may sway me. Um, and therefore, I just wonder: is it given that the, there's no huge time pressure on us, um, maybe it isn't the best to to force a vote on it today? Sinead, I have no issue with that, to, to be honest with you, because I think everybody's struggling a wee bit. It just, it's probably because so many of us are in on Starleaf, I would normally ordinarily be in the room. So I think that's probably you know, perhaps one of the issues. So I, I am content that we would we would, you know, bring this back to a future meeting. And if, if others are content that we do the same, Rosemary and Jerry, would you be content that we, we put yeah. off making it? Oh, and Tom yeah. and, and Nicola then in the room as well, obviously. Yeah, that's great. Are we sure? Yeah, yeah, happy enough with that, Chair. Again, from, from our perspective, if we're going to make any change to this at all, uh, you know, I think uh, option C is the, is the one that we need to look at. And there is no doubt that whenever you were going through that, there would be that opportunity for... Uh, that change that may be required or something else added to it or whatever. But again, on the on the other side of the coin, um, I think that it is something that uh, should... <sighs> It's something that we need to have tied in in some way if we're bringing something like this through that is not, if you like, abused. And when I, when I, when I say that, I mean in a sense of, of you know, that it's only used where necessary and where required to be used. Uh, because I do believe that the main uh, and, and the best way is for people to be here, if at all possible, uh, and, and able to vote uh, uh, in person. And I do understand the situation we're in at this moment in time. But I think whenever we're looking at it for long term, that... Uh, Option C is the option that we would run for. We're quite happy to, uh, yeah, to uh, let us sit uh, to another meeting. Okay. And, and are you content then also that we'll, we'll come back to this at a further meeting? Yeah, Linda, I'm happy enough with that. Yeah. Sorry, Chair. No bother. Well, I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm, I'm content that that's the way we, we go forward. So, um, Nick, you're happy enough that that's, that's the approach that. The committee's agreeing that we're, we're going to wait and uh, yes. instead of further making okay. Yep, no problem at all. That's brilliant. Thank you, members. So agenda item six then is the legislative consent motion. <clears throat> Excuse me. And at our last meeting, the committee agreed to defer its consideration of responses to give those parties who had not responded the opportunity to do so. Uh, page 75 of your pack is a clerk's cover memo which summarises the responses received. At pages 82 to 110 are the responses received, and at page 3 of tabled items is a response from the SDLP. So, members, the committee are going to receive a briefing from Assembly officials on the procedures of LCMs in the new year, and the clerk will also schedule evidence sessions with our counterparts in Scotland, Wales. Westminster and a session with the officials from the executive office after the recess period. So this is an issue that will we'll be returning to at our next meeting. Um, if members have any comments they want to make at this time, I'm, I'm happy to, to take those on board or if you just want to wait until we have the briefings. Okay. Nobody has indicated, but I just want to be clear that I'm not missing somebody. No. Okay, thank you. So, then agenda item seven is our strategic planning. So, uh, at our last committee meeting, we agreed to review, to, <coughs> excuse me, to review our work priorities for 2021. Uh, page 116 of your pack is the committee's report on strategic planning. At page 118 is a list of, pri of the priorities. And the, the priorities next on the list are the review of e-petitions, review of how the order paper deals with topical issues, and a review of private, private members' bills. Those members, we, we also need to be cognizant of what can be achieved in the remainder of the mandate we will have to consider the potential for workflow from NDNA, 
including the reform of protection of concern, language provision and budget scrutiny. So that doesn't mean that we shouldn't put things on our on our forward work plan. We absolutely should, but we need to be conscious that they may be knocked off if NDNA stuff comes forward. So there's also been an amendment to the NA Act recently relating to the EU exit, and the committee will have to consider potential changes to standing orders emerging from this in the new year in relation to consent decisions. So from my own point of view, members, I think the one, I mean, I can certainly say two of those for me would be, still be priorities, but the one that probably isn't is the review of how the order paper deals with topical issues, because we've just taken a decision as a committee that we wouldn't look at the issue around member statements. So I think that that would have been one of the ways of doing that. So I think we, we kind of have established that we're just not at a point where, where we see that as a priority at this time and moment. If people have a, a different view, I'm happy to, to hear it, but I would be inclined to say that I suppose I, would, I certainly would like to look at the review of e-petitions. Um, and I know there are definitely issues with private members' bills. It's, it's really around the turnaround time for them. Um, you know, I, I could give an example even around the special paid leave where it was taken forward in the doll. Mary Lou and Louise O'Reilly brought it forward. It was very quickly turned around and brought onto the floor of the doll and the the minister adopted it immediately and you know, hopefully we're gonna to to see that in place really quickly. But even in terms of the private member spell itself, it was really quickly there's a really quick turnaround on it. So I think that there is work to be done there, but we just need to decide can we do what can we do in this mandate? So was it if we had to pick one, where would members heads be at this moment in time? And I'm going to do the same again because I'm not able to clearly see if, if um, people are trying to indicate, and I don't want to miss anybody, if people don't mind, I'm just going to call people out in order and then we can give a view on it. So, Tom? Yeah, well, I, I think that... Um if we're looking at, at uh, perhaps maybe the review of, of the um, how the order papers are dealt with and issues like that there, and uh, and again the, the topical issues, uh, I think that is something that uh, we could be looking at within the committee. But I mean, I'm I'm quite easy as to what the committee uh, co uh, agrees to on on taking forward. Okay, Tom, I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, I Chair, did you say you were happy enough or you thought that the order paper dealing with topical issues wasn't um, a priority at the minute? Well, it's not that it's not a priority, but we had talked about member statements and we had kind of decided that we're not going to go down that road at the minute. So that would have been a way of sort of looking at the topical issues. We do have topical questions. We have urgent oral questions and matters of the day. So, I mean, we're probably not saying that it's a perfect um, that it all works perfectly because I, I, I don't necessarily think it does but I don't think what we have probably have the capacity to look at all of those issues and I think we probably do need to look at them all in the round so I mean my preference would be around the review of e-petitions or the review of private members bills Okay I just want to double check that listen I'm with Tom really um, that have no personal kind of choice for um I wouldn't choose any of them over, so I'll, I'll go ahead with the committee and follow the, follow no. your lead. No problem, that's great. Rebecca. Thank you. Um, Sinead? Sure, can you hear me okay? Yes, Sinead. Yeah. So, yeah, so I take aboard what you said. You're absolutely right. You know, as a committee, um, we have been, I suppose, charged with having to respond to what hopefully is a temporary situation. And a lot of our time is consumed, our short time is consumed on that. But also we will be obliged, I believe, in the new decade, new approach stuff that may arrive at us at any time. Um, and we probably have to leave room and scope for that. But things have changed. You know, even in that, I know that um, certainly the statements was something that I was keen to, but I know things have moved on and it is a new world. And probably in this sort of 
COVID environment and working remotely and the disconnect between Stormont and the public being able to get into it, I think there probably is a new focus on the e-petitions part because we do have to find new creative ways of the public to connect to us. And I think in this climate, that probably is a healthy choice. Now, that said, I really do um, think the order paper and how they deal with topical issues is still a hot thing because, you know, you, you have to ask, when we say topical issues, of course we have topical questions and you have matter of the day. But also, um, and I know the chair will appreciate this, also we have on a day where there is primary legislation scheduled, we also have topical issues in the form of a minister's statement. And yesterday, for example, we had um, federation stage, and yet four ministerial statements were placed on the order paper, which ultimately was um, a decision to take off the adjournment debate at the end, or the, I think it was, um, it was a piece. So there are things that are happening that and of course, you can't. I know it's you know the minister's statements obviously had to be made in that, but I just think we need to find a better way of doing that because once the business office is presented with that sequencing of events at short notice, it has that unintended consequence that those adjournment bits never never get heard. Um, so I think there definitely still has to be something around the order paper and how how it's formed. There's flaws in it, and I think COVID has really uh, shone a light on that. Thank you, yeah. Chair. I don't disagree with you, Sinead, to, to be fair. I think I just think it is probably quite a substantial piece of work because for me it's not just about dealing with the topical issues. I actually think sort of in the in the vein of what you've just the comments you've just made, I actually need to look at in the round and how it how it is all all of the businesses carried out within the chamber. So I, I would I would be in agreement with you in relation to that. Um, but I suppose just within our capacity and, and the time we have left and the fact that we will have to deal with the NDNA. I th am I right in saying that e-petitions is, is probably, we don't need to make a decision on this today, by the way, I'm just sort of trying to get as much conversation yes, around. Yes, sure. sure, I would agree. I just think in this climate, e-petitions has probably bubbled up higher than it would have been at the outset for, for me. Yeah. No, absolutely. Thank you, Sinead. Um, <clears throat> Jerry. Uh, thanks, Chair. Um, yeah, I can't agree on the invitation stuff. I suppose, like, I mean, this year there's there's been no attempt or no no real possibility of people to uh, carry out normal petitions, you know, uh, and uh, sign ones. And I know there's some sort of provision or scope for a limited online petition submission um, at the minute. But I think the petition question um, is very relevant, so I would uh, have some sympathy towards that. Um, I think the other thing is, is PMBs and have me on one going through um, the process, so a bit of self-interest in terms of trying to get that uh, proceeded quickly. But um, I think obviously there seems to be, um, and the staff are obviously you know, doing a lot of uh, hard work, um, but there does seem to be an issue with uh, slowness in terms of turnaround of PMBs, uh, and given the fact like, there's, there's quite a amount in uh, the system at the minute. Um, I think it would, it would be interested not just from my own PMP perspective, but for the wider uh, issues. It'd be good to have a process that it's you know it's um, doesn't uh, skirt over scrutiny and accountability, but it is done in, in a quick uh, way. So I suppose there's a bit in my perspective in um, in looking at PMPs, chair. Yeah, I, th I think. It there is something that needs to be looked at. It is that slow turnaround, and it's not down to to staff or or, or resourcing. To be fair with you, it is down to process. Because I actually had a bit of a conversation with the clerk about this earlier. So and and that's kind of, you know, where my, my thinking was that is that there, there if there's something wrong processes, then we need to we need to streamline them. We need to fix them, and that could probably actually help staff as much as it helps members if it's done right. And um, and in terms of the petitions, we're just a million miles behind everywhere else, so that's not where we want to be either. Um, Rosemary, can I let you come in before we? Yeah. Okay, I think the review of the order papers is something that needs to be looked at. Like yesterday, for example, as you said, 
four ministerial statements and then it uh, knocked off the adjourn adjournment debate at the end. And don't forget that adjournment de debate has already come from being cancelled at another time. So I don't, I don't think that's fair. And I think there has to be some way around that. Um, uh, private members, Bill, I do think that they are too slow in proceeding. And that's another issue that needs to be discussed. Can I, um, I'm going to let Nick come in just if he has any comments he wants to make in relation to it. But what I am going to say suppose before we, we even go there is that for the same reasons that um, we didn't take a decision on the, on the previous item, I think that it, given that it is such a, a poor connection and I certainly will be in the room at the next meeting and I think we, we could definitely have more conversation. I'm not even saying that we have to have more conversation about this at the next meeting. I think if we waited even until the meeting after the next one, but at the next one just established a process. So whereby people could even, for example, highlight their priorities in order so that we can just get even to, a, if not a consensus, to a majority of, of the order, you know, what order we would take these, these items in. So I don't want people to make a decision on, on what their priorities are today, but if you are content to take a decision that we would do it in that way, and we may well be able to reach a consensus around this, which would be great, but if we can't, then if we even just, uh, as parties and individuals are able to, put in order what we think the priorities are and do it that way. I suppose it's a bit like the, the dot system that we would have all used, I'm sure, before in committees to establish priorities. Are members content that we would do it that way? Yeah. Content, yeah. No. Nick, would you like to come in? I hope you're not going to tell me now that's not the way you would have wanted to do it. <laughs> no, that's that, that's fine, Chair. And, and that's the whole point of really revisiting this at the minute, because obviously um, we hadn't looked at the strategic planning stuff for a number of months because we'd had other things to do. But I think it's a good opportunity in the next couple of meetings to have a think about that and see what it is the committee would like to, to press on with. So so that's fine. Um, you know, we'll, we'll come back to it perhaps schedule it for our meeting, which I think is due on the 4th of February, which is the one after next, or we can schedule it for the next one, but you know, that's no problem. Okay, that's great. Thank you very much. Um, and if members are content, then we'll go on to the next agenda item, which is, <coughs> excuse me, correspondence. <coughs> A page is 120 and 135 is the latest newsletter from the Human Rights Commission and notification of the launch of its annual statement, which took place on the 10th of December. A copy of the report is at page 5 of your tabled items. At page 140 is an email from Pivotal, which provides notification of its recently published report, Education, Training and Skills for Young People Aged 14 to 19 Years Old. Are members content that we note the items of correspondence? Okay. Yeah. Our forward work program then. So following obviously the discussions that we've had today, our strategic plan and the clerk will proceed incorporating um, how we intend to move forward with those in relation to the forward work program. And we will also continue to progress with our LCMs and the proxy voting then will be on the on the forward work program as well. So our Members content? Yep. Okay. And agenda item 10 then is chairperson's business. So as members are aware, we, myself and Tom had arranged to meet with, do an informal meeting with the deputy chairperson and the committee clerk and assembly officials to discuss the potential and practicalities of introducing the hybrid proceedings in the chamber. So we we had, as it was an informal meeting, there isn't actually a note of the meeting, but I suppose the very short um, brief of the meeting would be what we wanted to establish was, is it possible to do the hybrid proceedings as in, you know, technically can we be linked in and, you know, can we use the hybrid proceedings? And what we were told is, yes, it can be done fairly easily and fairly inexpensively. 
Am I right in saying we've lost some members from this meeting? Uh, Chair, yes. Uh, Jerry, Jerry put a note in to say that he had to he had to leave the meeting. Um, okay, right. I just wanted to be sure that we hadn't accidentally lost anybody. No, um, and I, I think Sinead is still is still here, but has gone into the audience um, rather than the spotlight. Okay, that's fair enough. Um, so I suppose just to to wrap up on that, it it is the case, hi Sinead, that it, it can be done. Um, it, would, it can be done very quickly. It can be done within a, a very short number of weeks. I mean, a, a week, I think it's a week and a half. Um, and, and fairly inexpensively. So it is possible. And there are no blockages to it in terms of even how it would work within the chamber. There would be some things that you wouldn't be able to do if you were coming in um, remotely and that would be sort of around say the lack of supplementary questions I mean you can't bob up and down if you're sitting in your house it just would be impossible for the, the speaker to watch that um, even with the help of those at the top table but if it was your question you would get your supplementary question you could speak but the other thing you probably wouldn't be able to do is an intervention but I think if, if, if everybody understands the rules about what's possible and what's not and what you can and can't do then, I mean, it is something that we should certainly consider. But, I mean, really, our, our role in it is, is around the standing orders. So, I mean, if members have any comments they want to make at this stage, uh, I'm, I'm happy to... Uh, sorry, Tom, can I bring you in first just to establish that I'm giving an accurate reflection of the meeting? Yeah, well, I, th I think you do have uh, you have covered it well there. Um, there are things that wouldn't be able to be done, and I think that um, if it's something that that we we're going to go with, that I think it'd be good that members get a full grasp of what actually can be delivered in this. Yeah, it can be done. It's something at a cost of fourteen and a half thousand or something to put all in place, and uh, you know there be a number of screens around the chamber and so forth. But uh, you know, as as the chair has said, taking interventions and uh, different issues like that would just be uh, it would be impossible to do that type of thing. But in general, for for somebody that that wanted to use it and participate in a debate, that could be done. Uh, but it would only be on on those issues that could be uh, it could be used for. So. Um, yeah, if if members uh, if they want to pursue it, then I think it's it's. Um, they would need to get a full grasp just of what exactly uh, could be done and what couldn't be done, so that it would clear up any ambiguity within it uh, before uh, it would be put in place. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Tom. People need to understand exactly what's possible and, and under what circumstances you would be um, coming in remotely as well. You know, obviously, it, it's Ideally, if, if a minister is up on a on a piece of legislation or question, he would prefer them to be in the chamber. But as we've seen a number of weeks ago, that's not always possible. We had a number of ministers isolating, so that's really where this this conversation came out of. Um, uh, Sinead and Rosemary, do you have any comments that you just want to make or any? I'm not sure how I could have in our spotlight. Sorry, Rosemary. Can okay. you hear me? Yep. Yeah, thanks, Rosemary. Um, no, Chair, um, I, I, I'm sorry I missed some of this. I did fall out of the system and, and I came in midway there. But in terms of, I'd heard, or I think the Commission were talking about, and we'll all know that the televisions um, that are in the building are obsolete, if any of them even still work. I think very few. And there was talk about a rollout. Um, of new TVs throughout the building. And I wondered, is this um, because the the hardware part of it, forgive my non-technical language in this, but if there is um, a cost to it, I'm just wondering or would hope that there might be cost saving to be realized that it would be rolled out as part of maybe that plan to put new TVs throughout the building. Um, because they would obviously be screens or sourcing screens from similar party. I don't know if that's been considered. Just thinking if there's any cost even to be had, but it's good news, news to know that it's considered to be relatively um, not that expensive. Yeah, no, and, and that, that's exactly the, the point that I made, that it's, it's, I suppose, in, in the grand scheme of things. 
not expensive, but we still have to establish that it's 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 valuable enough to spend anything on that. I suppose mm -hmm. that's but but that that won't be for us to worry about. Like, thankfully, and um, Rosemary, do you? I, I think no. I, th I think it's worth something worth considering and something that I think we should maybe further inve investigate. I know you and Tom have had perhaps a wee bit a better idea of what can and can't be done, and maybe. If we could have somebody maybe speak to the group as a whole at some stage. But Rosemary, that's exactly what I was going to suggest. I think you're you're hundred percent right. The informal meeting was really to establish could it be done because we didn't feel yeah. there was any value in bringing people to a committee meeting to tell them to tell us this can't be done. Of course, yeah. But because we've had that conversation, I, I absolutely agree with you. I think that um, the committee should be afforded the opportunity to ask the relevant questions. That, that they want to ask. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're content, that is actually how we will um, proceed. The money clerks will, will arrange that, if that's okay. Nick, if you're okay and arranging that for the new year. Yes, no problem. No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I'm just... Yeah, no, I think that's... I think that's everything on that item. Agenda item 11, then, is any other business? Does anybody have... No? No. Okay, well, our final agenda item, then, is the date and time of our next meeting, and it will be on Wednesday, the 20th of January 2021, at 2.30 in room 29. Um, just as this will be our last meeting before Christmas, just I'm sorry, Jerry dropped off before this, but just want to wish you all a very happy and a peaceful Christmas. I hope you all manage to get some kind of a break and come back nice and refreshed and, and, and have had some nice time with your family. Um, I know it's been a really hectic, there's never anything only a hectic year in this job, to be honest, but this year has been particularly difficult for everybody and, and that's no less so for those in, in elected life it's, it's not easy and, and you're, you are called 24 7 so i really do hope you all manage to have some very valuable time with your family so this is great so enjoy it and i'll see some of you before before christmas again but for those of you that don't um have a really good christmas and enjoy it thank you same to you all and take care nick i <laughs> hope you're okay <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I'm fine. Thanks. All the best. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye now. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Committee Room 29. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Committee Room 29. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Committee Room